available at little or no cost to you. Call 800-597-8059 to order yours today. Indigen oxygen concentrators are portable and make oxygen from the air around you. They're light, quiet, and battery operated to go everywhere you go. And we have a full line of portable oxygen units to fit a wide range of budgets. If you're on Medicare, you may even qualify to get your Indigen unit at little or no cost to you. Go back to joining friends for the breakfast special, make spending time with the grandkids easier, or start attending your religious services again. Call Indigen now for a free information kit and a free no-obligation consultation on our complete line of affordable portable oxygen products. And anyone on Medicare or with eligible insurance plans may qualify to get an Indigen One at little or no cost. Call 800-597-8059. That's 800-597-8059. Fryers is always so delicious. I can tell that they use your milk method. Great job. You're welcome. Briar's Natural Vanilla is made with 100% grade A milk and cream and only sustainably farmed vanilla. Better starts with Briar's. Craving restaurant flavor? Introducing new Hellman's Drizzle Sauce. Crave-worthy flavors you can drizzle, dip, and dress to make home the best restaurant around. New Drizzle Sauces from Hellman's. We're on the side of food. Stress Balls Gummies have ashwagandha, an herbal stress reliever that helps you turn the stress lot into your best life. Stress less and live more with Stress Balls. You get used to pet odors in your car. You think it smells fine, but your passengers smell this. Eliminate odors you've gone nose blind to for up to 30 days with the Febreze Car Vent Clip. Wow, it smells good in here. So you and your passengers can breathe happy. Tonight on Primetime, investigators looking not just for one, but a number of people who started the fire at a Wendy's in southeast Atlanta after the deadly shooting of Rayshard Brooks. And Tyler Perry reaching out to help the Brooks family, first paying for Rayshard's funeral, now a generous donation for his four children. And later, could a change to the locations where you're allowed to vote cut back on Georgia's election problems? We're looking at that possibility. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. We begin with a Facebook video from Clayton County that's getting attention now all over the country. It shows a police officer holding several boys at gunpoint. It's already been viewed more than a half a million times, Aisha. However, Cheryl, it only shows a portion of what happened. Tonight, both sides are giving new details on what led up to this and how it ended. It started with a 911 call yesterday from a gas station worker reporting some kids with a gun at the store. They came back again in the parking lot and they're fighting outside in the parking lot. Anyone Thank else you, have any weapons? If one of them has a gun. Newly released surveillance video shows what the worker was seeing going on outside the store. Police say the responding officer found a group of kids nearby that matched the 911 calls descriptions. Today, police released part of that officer's body cam video as he pulls up on the kids and a crowd forms the video 17 minutes in all. We've edited that video down because of the length. Stop! All of y'all stop! Get your hands up! Up! Walk towards me! Get your hands up! You're gonna get hurt! Get your hands up! Get your hands up! Now listen to me so you don't get hurt! Listen to me! Keep your hands up! Don't move! Don't move! Just relax! Nobody's hurt! Please, I don't want to hurt one of y'all! Standing by. Young man, don't move! Why does the guy think one of y'all have a gun? Okay, then we good. We good. Don't move. Y'all gonna make me nervous. We we chilling right now. Ready, I need a 73. I got a crowd forming on me. Relax, guys. Don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. Back up. You ain't got nothing to do with this. You ain't got nothing to do with this. We've had a good conversation, all right? Don't pay, don't pay no attention to the crowd. All right, y'all just relax. Y'all know why I'm here. I told you why I'm here, right? All right, so don't pay no attention to them. I'm not Superman. I can't see through their clothes. I'm not checking by myself, guys. I'm one against five because I'm being safe. 
I don't care. All right, turn around. Relax. Listen, I stopped y'all because of what's going on. We're going to walk back over here to the store, and we're going to go from there, guys, okay? All this that they're doing, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about what we had going on. Nobody got disrespected. Nobody got hurt, right? All right, that's it. Let's walk back over there. After patting the boys down, the teens and officer went back to the gas station. Police say the boys showed him this BB gun that had been tossed in the bushes. Investigators say it looks like a real semi-automatic pistol. Before letting the boys go, the officer says he warned them of the danger of carrying around a BB gun that looks like a real gun. But one boy's family and community members have a very different take on this. Joe Hankey spoke to them earlier today. One of the young boys seen in the body camera video, a teenager named Kamari, talked with me this afternoon. He appeared traumatized by this incident, and he said during it he feared for his life. Meanwhile, I also talked with his mother. She said she's frustrated for several reasons, one of those being she never heard from police after all of this played out last night. Kamari says the situation should have never led to a gun being pointed at him or other teenagers. During a press conference late this afternoon, Kamari held back tears at one point while describing his encounter with a Clayton County police officer. His mother is frustrated by what played out and how she learned about this incident. Here is Kamari and his mother talking with us late this afternoon at that press conference. I thought I was going to die because I seen all these black kids just dying. And, and to have myself in that, it was just crazy. I actually found out about the video this morning. My daughter all the way in Ohio sent me the video. She found out before I found out about this whole um, situation. And I was just wondering, like, why wouldn't the police contact the parents? They, contact, they didn't contact any parents. And alongside Kamari and his mother at that press conference were several community activists. They said earlier today they met with Chief Kevin Roberts from the Clayton County Police Department. And during the conversation they had, they said Roberts said that the officer's actions followed department policy and were justified. That did not sit well with those community activists. They said they are now demanding that the department update its use of force policies. They're also demanding that the officer involved, the one that pulled the gun, they want him fired. That confrontation in Clayton County, one of several recently that's raised tension in Metro Atlanta between communities and the police. Earlier today, people gathered to march for police reform in Stone Mountain following the death of Rayshard Brooks in southeast Atlanta. Today, President Trump took a step to address police brutality nationwide with a new executive order. The order creates a national database of excessive force complaints, and it puts grant money toward helping departments reach use of force certification, certification rather, and encourages the involvement of mental health professionals when responding to nonviolent cases. Still, the president opposed calls to defund police departments. Americans know the truth. Without police, there is chaos. Without law, there is anarchy. And without safety, there is catastrophe. The police union says Atlanta officers are feeling the pressure of responding to protests, working long extra shifts, and being at the center of nationwide criticism. According to the department, eight officers have resigned since the first of this month. Many saying they are angry with the mayor and attorney general rushing to judgment about recent use of force cases where officers were fired and sometimes charged. The Atlanta Police Foundation says morale is lower than any time in recent memory, with officers working 12-hour shifts seven days a week. Last night, Mayor Bottom said officers need to realize change is necessary. She's issuing orders to chance to change APD policy by limiting deadly force and requiring officers to intervene if they see an inappropriate use of force. Meanwhile, the head of the police union says a mandate like that isn't needed. He claims the mayor and Fulton District Attorney Paul Howard are rushing ahead with punishments for these officers without completing full investigations. I have been a cop for over 30 years. I allow the evidence to take me down the path that it goes. I do not make any that's why you don't hear us saying our officer was right or our officer was wrong, because as of to date, we don't know. And if we don't know, and the DA thinks he knows, I would like to know what he has. Now, the only thing I've heard from the mayor is she don't like the way it looked. Well, if that's the burden of proof that we have to have from now on, that's a bad burden of proof right there. 
Howard says his office is considering several possible charges against former officer Garrett Rolf, including murder, felony murder and voluntary manslaughter. GBI says Rolf shot Rayshard Brooks at a Wendy's in Southeast Atlanta Friday night as Brooks ran away when police tried to arrest him for DUI. Howard says charges for the other officer involved are not out of the question and he says an announcement on those charges could come tomorrow. Last night, members of the Atlanta City Council were in a meeting until almost one in the morning, listening to concerns about the community and their relationship with the police. Our team counted up to a number of citizen comments, and there were almost 500 of them. Council member Joyce Shepard says the goal right now is a complete transformation of the Atlanta Police Department. So a lot of time police are called just specifically when things happen and say, I've got this problem, that problem. When we talk about community policing, that's folks interacting on a regular basis with officers. So it's not just when there's a call made, but that's folks creating relationships where the community see the police officers and they don't see them as a threat. They don't see them something that's being called when there is a crisis. And so we have to really do a better job of community policing. Council Member Shepard says she's hoping to keep open communication even after protesters stop marching. And as for a new police chief for the city of Atlanta, she is looking for someone with a different perspective who can connect with the community. Tonight, there are new details in the investigation into who set the fire at the Wendy's restaurant on University Avenue Saturday, the day after Rayshard Brooks was shot and killed. Investigators now say they are looking at two persons of interest. They released new photos of a woman calling her a new person of interest in the case. Now, we want to be clear with this. Investigators think this is a different woman from the photos they released over the weekend. These pictures right here show another woman who has her face mostly covered. Again, investigators think these are two different women, but they want to talk to both. We have multiple suspects at this time. We've only got quality photos of two at this time. The fire was started in multiple locations using multiple different incendiary devices, um, from homemade blowtorches to fireworks to on-scene combustibles that were just lit and thrown inside the store. Investigators say they are not yet sure if the people responsible are tied to a larger group. Crime Stoppers and Georgia Arson Control are both offering a reward up to $10,000 for information that leads to an arrest. Wendy's corporate office says it is dedicated to helping workers who lost their jobs because of the fire. In a memo to employees, the company says it will continue to pay those workers and give them jobs at other locations nearby so they don't have to suffer this financial loss. The company also said it will continue to support change through social justice, youth and education efforts. Losing this restaurant is a big deal for the surrounding neighborhood, which is actually considered one of Atlanta's food deserts. We'll have a lot more on that coming up tonight on at 9. Up next, movie mogul Tyrell Perry's generous donation to help out the family of Rayshard Brooks. I'm meteorologist Samantha Moore, one of your 11 Alive storm trackers, and we've been tracking those cool temperatures and cloudy conditions all due to this upper level low. So coming up, just how long this system will be in control. And don't forget, we are streaming right now on the 11 Alive YouTube channel, so go ahead and subscribe. You can even join the conversation in the community section. Stick around. More 11 Alive news in prime time coming up after the break. Limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station.
today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. The governor is lifting some coronavirus restrictions in the state, including allowing gatherings of 50 people or more with social distancing. There is no longer a dining limit in restaurants and no seating restrictions in theaters. Bars can have 50 people or 35 percent of fire capacity. Salons, barbershops and tattoo parlors can also now take walk ins. But you may want to check the restrictions at individual businesses before you go. 11 Alive Chinu Her talked to restaurants about how they handle it. At Sweet Auburn Seafood in Atlanta, dine-in customers aren't swarming in yet. At this date, with you know everything that's happened with you know COVID-19 and where we are, we have not officially opened our doors. Executive General Manager James Brashears says the restaurant is still taking precaution before bringing back customers to dine in, even after Governor Brian Kemp says he's allowing restaurants to operate at full capacity again. We're being very cautious about the steps that we take just to ensure that, you know, we first and foremost pay attention to the safety of our staff and our guests. That's what Ann Catrano is also doing at her restaurants, Bacchanalia and Star Provisions, even though they're open. I mean, our goal is to make our staff and our guests feel safe. I mean, that's our goal even before COVID-19, right? Brashears says every restaurant's timeline is different. They plan to reopen the dining sometime in July. Just because the restrictions have been lifted doesn't mean that it is the appropriate time and uh, safe because there's still a lot of unknowns at the start of restrictions being lifted and there's still some the same unknowns today. In the meantime, they're focused on making hundreds of meals per day for essential workers through the World Central Kitchen and hope their customers will see them when their doors open. We are still here. We're just trying to do what we can to uh, step into this new normal. Some of the other guidelines for restaurants, workers only have to wear a face covering if they're interacting with customers. For salad bars and buffets, workers are allowed to serve patrons cafeteria style or the business can offer hand sanitizer, a sneeze guard and regularly replace shared utensils to allow those customers to serve themselves. And they can offer grab and go service, but coolers can only be stocked at minimal levels. Today, new COVID-19 cases remain steady in Georgia with 664 after several days in a row of upward trends. And there are probably a couple of reasons we can point to for those changes, given what we know about how the data lags behind. This is the time we expect to see some of the impact of the mass protests on COVID-19 cases. We also got a great question from a viewer asking how much testing we're doing and how that might also play a role. So here's how that breaks down. One month ago, Georgia had completed 260,000 COVID tests. As of Monday, that number had gone up to 625,000. That's a 139% increase in the number of tests administered across our state. Another measurement public health officials look at is the rate of positive tests. So that means the number of people who have the virus among those tested. So this is harder to calculate because people who have the virus often take a number of tests. So it's not perfect science here, but we do know that one month ago, 14% of people who got coronavirus tested were positive a month later. That's now down to about 9%. The CDC wants to see that number below 15. Anything above that is likely to start to strain our hospital resources. So where are we on those hospital resources? Here's a look at those currently in the hospital. Right now, our line is pretty steady after trending up a bit last week. As cases rise, we'll be keeping a close eye on this number to see how severe they are.
Your 11 Alive storm trackers have been tracking those cloudy, cooler conditions today. And as we take a look this evening across the city of Atlanta, you can see that widespread overcast. We did have some breaks in the clouds today, but it really didn't heat us up all that much. In fact, temperatures were more like early April than they were the middle of June, but I didn't hear anyone complaining. So there's that area of low pressure in the upper levels of the atmosphere. It's cut off from the flow of the jet streams. So that means it's not going anywhere anywhere soon. And it's hanging out over the Cal uh, Carolina coastline. So that's going to keep things just a little unsettled at times for us, meaning a few showers in the North Georgia mountains or scooting through the North Metro. No thunderstorms really expected tonight. Nothing strong anyway. There may be just a, a, a brief little downpour. But this low will be sliding off to the southeast of us as we head into the next few days, lifting out. And that will change our weather pattern a bit. But in the meantime, just a chance for general showers and thunderstorms tonight with the best chance there near the outer banks for severe. They have a marginal level one chance of severe tonight like we had last night. But through tomorrow, we'll just have that chance for general showers and storms. That coming from the Storm Prediction Center out of Norman, Oklahoma. So we're looking at a high temperature today that was 12 degrees below average. 75, we will take it after a morning low of 61. We should be around 69 and 87 this time of year. And we were well below that record high of 98. Can you imagine 98? I don't want to imagine it. I like, uh, I like mid-70s. So another thing that was great today is the humidity was so low due to the dew points. The dew points were in the 50s. That was nice and dry like early spring or fall instead of the midst of summer. And that dew point will be going back up in the 60s as we head in towards the weekend. And those temperatures are probably going to be the hottest that we have seen so far this year as we go to the first weekend of summer, which is this weekend. So for tomorrow, a 7 on the wasometer on that scale of 1 to an 11, with an 11 being a perfect day, with a 30% chance of showers and storms, mainly during the afternoon and evening. And the temperatures may be warming up just a few degrees warmer than we were today. So in terms of this evening, showers and storms moving mainly through the North Georgia mountain, kind of evaporating as they try to make their way into town. There may be one that hangs together, gives you a little downpour, but most people will not see any rain this evening. Getting into tomorrow afternoon and evening, more in the way of showers and storms kind of dotting the radar. They will be isolated in nature. 30% chance on our Wednesday. And that chance goes up as we head into our Thursday as we see a 40% chance of showers and storms. Just a little more coverage. Right now we're not expecting anything really organized in terms of uh, being strong to severe. But we'll watch that as we get towards our Thursday afternoon and evening. And it's looking like Friday afternoon and evening we'll be watching the radar as well for more widespread showers and storms. So They'll be isolated in nature yet this evening. We'll see an increasing chance for rain towards the end of our week, and then we dry it out and we heat it up for this weekend. So your seven-day forecast, a 30% chance on Wednesday, 40% uh, chance Thursday, back to 30% chance on Friday, but we do have the chance for some of those showers and storms. They evaporate over the weekend, though. We see heat. We see our first 90-degree days of the year coming for that first weekend of summer. Very appropriate. And Father's Day is looking like we'll see temps in the low 90s. Tyler Perry is reaching out to help the family of Ray Sharp Brooks, the man killed by police in Southeast Atlanta Friday night. A representative told 11 Alive Perry plans to pay for the college tuition of Brooks's four children. It may be a long way off for most of them. The oldest is 13, but the family attorney says it makes a world of difference. He was grateful when Perry announced this week he also planned to pay for Brooks's funeral. Support like that and it's uh, people who are actually um, in this community that love the community that want um, healing and families like this. Perry has not spoken publicly about the contribution, which is pretty common for him. But today he is being recognized in our hero central for making a small difference for this grieving family. Children see what is happening around them. What happens when they ask to be part of the protests? We talked to two Georgia families about it coming up. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. 
We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews. If you look in the crowds at some protests, you'll see children and teenagers with their parents. They have something to say too, and say they're not too young to be part of the solution. They are children well aware of the injustice around them. I hope that black people getting mistreated would stop. Young people who want to do something about it. It's good to stand up for your life. Kennedy Harris is 10, her brother Caden 9. They told their parents they want to be part of a change. And I told them that I wanted to go out and protest. We gave them the choice and we told them just everything that could happen. And they still wanted to go and as their parents, you know, we wanted to support them. A little bit nervous, but it was worth doing. We think it's really important to understand uh, so they can self-identify with what's going on and to just strive towards equality. This generation understanding that change requires action. And Cheryl, I couldn't watch everything on TV and then tell the story to our grandkids and great kid grandkids and they asked us, well, grandma and grandpa, what did you do when that was going on? I couldn't tell them that I just sat at home and did nothing. I think we need to change stuff right now to make a better world later on. 16 year old Whitaker Swan felt compelled. Saw what happened to George Floyd and said, I have to do something. He told his dad, Chris, he wanted to organize a protest in Sandy Springs. The unified people you have, you'd have black people, white people, men, women, people of the LGBTQIA plus community, everyone together. I think it shows that it's, it's everyone's problem and everyone needs to help to fix it. You, you don't go out and have one rally one protest one march and say okay that's done did that check we need systemic change how did you feel when you were out there it felt good that everyone cared about what was happening do you think sometimes people underestimate kids yes well we can do anything young people who know their voices and their actions can make a difference for the future i hope that they don't have to go through stuff that a lot of people are going Next, the city of Kennesaw takes a stand against a Confederate symbol, but it could put them at odds with state law. Live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live. We all remember the video from a week ago. Voters stuck in very long lines. Some of them had to wait for hours to vote. And some lawmakers have ideas on how to fix that, but it's easier said than done. Doug Richards has more. State law requires Election Day voters to vote at their neighborhood precincts, which gave voters stuck in lines at this Southeast Atlanta library. Four and a half hours, I believe. Little choice but to stay in line or go home. But if the law changed to allow voters to vote at any precinct in the county. Yeah, if they saw a line at one precinct, they could have gone to another one where there was no line. Democrat Roger Bruce is behind a bill that would allow voters to vote at any precinct in their home county. Another bill would require the state to send absentee ballots, not applications, but ballots to every voter in the state without the voter requesting it. I tried to uh, get an absentee ballot. I Last week in Fulton County, many voters waiting in lines complained that they'd never received the absentee ballots they had requested. If I send in an absentee ballot, I expect to get something in return, so I do not have to come out here and sit for two, three hours. You cash your ballot and you go home. It's that simple. Roger Bruce says his bill reflects the reality that voters are allowed to vote at numerous early voting locations in their home county because counties can keep digital voter lists at every location. In Fulton County, it would have let these voters choose from 164 voting locations. They do it for early voting. It's in the system. So, I mean, I don't understand what the difference is between early voting and election day, other than people just don't want to do it. There is limited enthusiasm in the Capitol for Bruce's bill. Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger's office says it has no position on it, and Bruce's bill has stalled in a House committee for about the last 500 days. Change is coming. The Kennesaw City Council has voted unanimously now to permanently remove the Confederate flag from the city's war memorial. We want to show you the flag that will be put there in its place. It was the unofficial state flag from around 1861 to 1879. It showed the coat of arms from the 1799 state seal on a blue background. A previous petition to remove the flag got 
thousands of signatures, but the flag remained because of a state law that prohibits moving locations or total removal of war memorials. The city council hearing arguments from both sides last night. There's people that don't even come downtown because they don't want to see it. They don't want to deal with that hurt, that pain. History is not there for you to like this life. It's there for you to learn from it. The vote came during a packed council meeting, which was set up for social distancing. Still, the city could face legal action for their decision. All right, time now to get you up to speed on some other local stories we are following for you. Gwinnett police are working to find out who shot and killed a woman in her Lawrenceville apartment. The victim is 35 year old Shamika Bird. Investigators think someone fired shots from outside, hitting the windows inside of the apartment building on Club Lakes Parkway. There were other people inside, but they were not heard. The shooting left neighbors shaken. He, heard, he said he heard about 30 shots because uh, he called me at work. Everybody, as you see, it's a, it's a lot of kids around here. We're all tightly in, so it gets scary, yeah. Police say they continue to canvass the area for witnesses and evidence. A four-year-old was one of two bodies found in a burned-out car on Colquitt Street Sunday. Douglasville police identified the bodies as 59-year-old LaWanda Barrows and four-year-old Layla Hobbs. Derek Hobbs has been arrested and is facing several charges, including two counts of felony murder. GBI investigators now say a shooting in Coweta County started with a high-speed chase involving a Georgia State Patrol trooper. The trooper was pursuing a 25-year-old man on a motorcycle last night in Noonan. Minutes later, officers found that man inside a bail bonds business along Greeson Trail. They say it looks like he broke in. GBI says a Noonan officer warned other officers the suspect had a gun Police say he did not follow commands and was shot once in the leg while reaching for his gun. The Johns Creek Police Chief is on administrative leave during an internal investigation. Chief Chris Byers was criticized recently for posts on his personal Facebook page, accusing some religious leaders of abandoning law enforcement after the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. The city manager tells 11 Alive the internal investigation is not related to Byers' Facebook posts. For now, Major Roland Castro will lead the department. What would you ask the candidates to be the next chief of the Atlanta Police Department? That is the question that we've been asking all day long on Facebook. It's also the question that we took to the leaders of the neighborhood associations that make up our city. Matt Pearl has a glimpse of what we found. So, hey, Galbraith. Jay Lawrence Miller. My name is Robin Jackson. I represent uh, Loring Heights. Adair Park. Castleberry Hill. I work downtown. Currently the president of the Atlanta Downtown Neighborhood Association. My one question would be... What level of accountability will officers have to the citizenry? Would the new police chief have experience in uh, diversity? What I'm most interested in um, are those soft skills. Um, so a deep-seated um, sense of compassion. Are we asking too much of our uh, police forces? You know, part of it comes down to training and you can't really train someone to be a social worker, you know, a, a meter maid, a traffic officer all at the same time. How about the police department just says that our responsibility is public safety. We are really, really, really concerned about what they're gonna do about homeless in downtown, the homeless people. We have always had a fantastic relationship with our police precincts. Um, especially Zone 5. We see them quite often directing traffic and also um, helping. There is no trust. If a police officer comes to my door and I own my house, I'm not going to let him in. We often talk about order, but we forget that peace part. And I think peace is um, a large part of what we need right now. We've had that good relationship with the police in the past. However, I, I do think that there are structural issues that we've seen. That the overall system is in desperate need um, of reform and change. Every voice, every body, every home matters. It, it matters. There's certainly things to address, and now seems to be a good time to do that. As the country reopens, businesses are turning to technology for new social distancing measures. Major airlines say passengers who refuse to wear a mask will be put on a domestic internal restriction list, and Amazon is unveiling a social distancing app. NBC's Miguel Amaguar looks at some items on the market to help protect Americans. 
Already faced with change, tonight major airlines are doubling down on their policy requiring passengers to wear masks. Those who refuse will be placed on an internal travel restriction list, losing their flying privileges for a duration of time to be determined. You know, I think wearing masks is a must right now. Companies across the nation are looking for new ways to protect consumers and employees. At Amazon, distance assistant technology allows staff to see if they are keeping their social distance and when they don't. Now, view how crowded the train is. In New York, the Long Island Railroad lets commuters find empty trains on its app, allowing them to space out. It comes as a new study says roughly half of all Americans voluntarily wear a mask at all times when leaving home. It's going to be more reassuring for people to know that, yeah, I'm wearing a mask because I'm protecting myself and I'm protecting the people around me. With an entire market of products, from hygiene hooks to open doors to wearable hand sanitizer dispensers, your employer and even your local theater will likely be required to take new safety measures to protect you. As more Americans return to work, they'll be greeted with reminders to keep their social distance. Some offices may even take their temperatures before they walk through the front door. Tonight, new rules and a new reality as we all face living in a pandemic. Next, more on the mounting pressure to break up the Capitol Hill organized protest where demonstrators have taken over six blocks of a Seattle neighborhood. While temperatures today were unseasonably cool, running some 12 to 15 degrees below average across North Georgia, only made it into the mid-70s. So coming up, just how long this mild pattern is going to be hanging around and what you can expect for the first weekend of summer. And we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only.
We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. A neighborhood near Capitol Hill in Seattle has all eyes fixed on it after Black Lives Matter protesters took over entire city blocks, including the police precinct in that east part of the Capitol there. First known as the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, the sit-in has a new name now, and with it comes increasing pressure from the president and from other politicians to break it up. Seattle is on edge. Protesters showing no signs of leaving this six block area after taking it over a week ago. Now festive, crowded and peaceful, demonstrators pitching tents and planting gardens this weekend in the newly renamed Capitol Hill occupied protest. We're here in peace and solidarity for a cause that needs to change. Their demands? Reduce funding for the Seattle Police Department, invest in the black community, and release arrested protesters. I've the president doubling down on general, local uh, officials. But if they don't do the job, we will do the job. The Seattle Police Union blames the situation on local leaders. When you voluntarily surrender a police facility and you acquiesce to unreasonable activism, criminal activity for political gain, to me, that's unconscionable. Mayor Jenny Durkin did not give specifics on what she'll do next. We're working with all people right now to move forward to find a way that we can accommodate First Amendment, but also make sure that we have a vital area for our businesses and residents. And since this occupied area spans several city blocks, police now say it takes three times longer to respond to 911 calls, putting even more pressure on leaders and protesters to resolve this as quickly as possible. During this time when Black Lives Matter is on the forefront in the fight for racial equality, other minority groups are standing in solidarity. We are seeing it all across Metro Atlanta. 11 Alive's Chinu Her explains why. In a fight for equality, Black Lives Matter is the message paving the way. As the black community rallies together, other minority groups are noticing their cries and standing in solidarity. We need to all stand together to get equality. Zua Vang is a member of the Hmong Georgia Community, Inc., and she says she hopes other minorities see the big picture of this movement. What they're doing is not just to benefit the black lives, but it is to benefit all minority groups. Numerous Asian American groups in and outside of Georgia signed this letter, saying in part, today we call on our Asian American community to break that silence and commit to building solidarity with our black brothers and sisters. We must resoundingly exclaim that black lives matter. The Latin American Association in Atlanta also made its voice heard, saying in their statement, unless each of us acts to uproot racism, it will continue to cost black lives. To that end, the Latin American Association stands in solidarity with black communities across this country. Vang, whose ethnicity is Hmong, says watching the black community hurt over recent events hit home. One of the people she's closest to in the world, her godmother since she was a kid, is black. And supporting black lives everywhere is to her also supporting Miss Clemens. No matter what nationality you are, we all need to stand together for equality. CPACs, another Asian American group in Metro Atlanta, also put out a statement in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. Looking out over Rome this evening, you can see quite a few clouds, light breeze, temperatures nice and mild in the mid-70s, low to mid-70s across North Georgia right now. With a few showers out there, we've been tracking on the radar around an area of low pressure. Now, you'll remember yesterday we had those thunderstorms on the east side of town, and they were brought in by this circulation around this area of low pressure. Well, it's pushed off a little further east today, but we're still being impacted by that circulation, bringing in just a few isolated showers, few and far between, but they're out there across North Georgia tonight. So just general showers and thunderstorms expected here during the evening and overnight. We'll have the best chance where that dark green color is on the Outer Banks and Coastal Carolina where they're seeing flooding conditions right now due to that upper level low. Uh, here though, no flooding, just a chance for a few showers and storms tonight and into tomorrow, but general in nature. We're not expecting anything severe. So 75 are high, 61 are 
our low. We should be around 87 and 69 this time of year. So definitely seeing those temperatures well below average. And uh, that meant we were in the low 70s in Athens and Gainesville, 70 in Blairsville, 79 in Dalton. So we were a little warmer on the west side of the state than we were on the eastern side. Nearer the low, the nearer the low you were, the cooler it was. Everyone felt the drier air, though. Dew points in the 50s. That means that it's going to be crisp. It's going to feel good. It's not going to feel as sticky. But we're going to get up to those high humidity levels again over the weekend. So get ready for that and some major heat. So you have to find some way to keep cool this weekend. So as far as tomorrow goes, for the most part, we'll be in the mid to upper 70s, a little more humid with a few more showers and storms expected during the afternoon and evening hours. So as far as what you can expect on your Wednesday, quite a few clouds around once again. We'll start to see a few showers and storms forming during the afternoon and evening hours as they spin around that area of low pressure. 30% chance on our Wednesday. As we get into Thursday, we think a little more widespread coverage possibly of showers and storms in the afternoon and evening so about a 40 percent chance and then getting into Friday as well I think we'll have a chance during the afternoon and evening primarily right on this model the RPM model, it shows a little better coverage than on Thursday. So we're going to have to wait and see. Right now we're calling for 30%, but do expect to see some showers and storms on your Friday afternoon and evening. You may not get any at your house, but down the road a piece, they might. So we'll have those isolated showers on the north side tonight. We'll have an increasing chance for rain as we get into our Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then it is going to be a hot first weekend of summer, the summer solstice is Saturday and temperatures are going to be feeling summer like as we heat up to near 90 degrees on Saturday 91 for Father's Day but I think most of Father's Day will be hot and dry with just a chance for a few showers happening later on in the day otherwise a dry weekend but that's bookended by chances for rain and the 30 to 40 percent chance range as we head into the end of this week and also at the beginning of next week so enjoy your first hot dry weekend of summer Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks.
Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. A viral post claims iPhone users can get Siri to help document what happens when they're pulled over by police. But how does this all work? Jason Puckett verifies. There are a lot of posts and viral videos that talk about an iPhone shortcut to use if you get pulled over. So all you have to do is say, hey Siri, I'm being pulled over. And it's going to initiate 18 different actions at one time. According to these posts, your phone will automatically send your location to an emergency contact and automatically start a video recording. Now, a few of you asked us to check this out. So we're verifying. Can my iPhone record video and my location if I say I'm getting pulled over? Well, for the first test, we just tried asking Siri. Hey Siri, I'm getting pulled over. So no, it's not automatically built into your phone. But these videos aren't being faked. This is a real thing. You just have to install it first. It's done through an app called Shortcuts. Now that's an Apple created app that is already on your iPhone. Shortcuts basically lets you program your phone to do basic tasks. It took me about a minute to make a command myself. Hey Siri, record for me. Now she's recording video. The viral shortcut is called police. It was shared by a Reddit user in 2018. When you tell Siri, I'm getting pulled over, it turns down your volume, lowers your brightness, sends your location to an emergency contact, starts recording video, and uploads that video to your iCloud account. So does it work? Hey Siri, I'm getting pulled over. Yes, it automatically turned on my camera and sent my location to my work phone, which I set as the emergency contact. So we can verify, iPhones can record video and my location if I say I'm getting pulled over, but it is not automatically built in. You do have to install that specific shortcut. Now again, this isn't a new program or app, it's just instructions for your iPhone. And it lets you choose which contacts, if any, that it will send information to. This doesn't work on Android phones, but iPhone users can find a link for how to install this on our website. And if you have other questions like this, make sure you send us an email. National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. 
on 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. With new COVID-19 cases declining, many countries across Europe are lifting travel restrictions. The changes some come just in time for the summer tourist season. Vacationers will be testing the waters of fabled beaches and some countries are offering incentives to help them revive their tourism businesses. NBC's Carl Nazman reports from Berlin, Germany. The summer tourism season looks set to finally kick off now with several EU countries reopening their borders with each other. Even though Americans are not yet allowed in, this is still a relief for many countries, especially those that are reliant on tourism money. The question now is how do you convince travelers that it's safe to visit? Well, the group of Spanish islands that includes Ibiza is running a special pilot program allowing in thousands of Germans. Yes just Germans to test the coronavirus measures and safety regulations that are in place before a full reopening later this summer. But the most extreme example has to be Cyprus. They love Cyprus. They very like Cyprus. Now, the small island country near Greece has agreed to pay in case you contract COVID-19 on your vacation. That's right. They'll foot the bill for your food, accommodation, medical treatment, even entertainment in case you come down with the coronavirus while you are on the island. Hopefully uh, that's going to give people the peace of mind to um, consider Cyprus as their holiday destination this summer. Right now on prime time, the people are speaking and it appears some Georgia lawmakers are listening. The push to tackle social change and police reform from the state capitol. And people working together to repair parts of their neighborhood after they say vandals are trying to pull them apart. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. We begin, though, with a Facebook video from Clayton County getting attention now all over the country. It shows a police officer holding several boys at gunpoint. It's already been viewed more than a half a million times. Now, it only shows a portion of what took place, as you know, Cheryl, and tonight both sides are giving new details on what led up to this and how it all ended. It started with a 911 call yesterday from a gas station worker reporting some kids with a gun at the store. They came back again in the parking lot and they're fighting outside in the parking lot. Anyone Thank else you, have any weapons? Yeah, one of them has a gun. Now, newly released surveillance video shows the teenagers outside the store. You can see them right there, and police said that the officer found a group of the kids nearby that matched the caller's descriptions. Well, today, police released part of the officer's body cam video as he approaches the teenagers, and then a crowd begins to form. Now, the video is 17 minutes long, so we edited it down because of the length. Stop! All of y'all, stop! Get your hands up! Up! Walk towards me! Get your hands up! You're gonna get hurt! Get your hands up! Get your hands up! Now, listen to me so you don't get hurt! Listen to me! Keep your hands up! Don't move! Don't move! Just relax. Nobody's hurt. Please, I don't want to hurt one of y'all. Standing by. Young man, don't move! Why does the guy think one of y'all have a gun? Okay, then we good. We good. Don't move. Y'all gonna make me nervous. We, we chilling right now. Ready, I need a 73. I got a crowd forming on me. Relax, guys. Don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. Back up. You ain't got nothing to do with this. You ain't got nothing to do with this. We've had a good conversation, all right? Don't pay, don't pay no attention to the crowd. All right, y'all just relax. Y'all know why I'm here. I told you why I'm here, right? All right, so don't pay no attention to them. I'm not Superman. I can't see through their clothes. I'm not checking by myself, guys. I'm one against five because I'm being safe. I don't care. All right, turn around. Relax. 
Listen, I stopped y'all because of what's going on. We're going to walk back over here, here to the store, and we're going to go from there, guys, okay? All this that they're doing, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about what we had going on. Nobody got disrespected. Nobody got hurt, right? All right, that's it. Let's walk back over there. All right, so after searching those young men, the officers and the teenagers, they go back to the gas station. Police say the boys showed him this BB gun right there on your screen that had been tossed into the bushes. And investigators say it looks like a real semi-automatic pistol. Before letting the boys go, the officer says that he warned them of the dangers of carrying around a BB gun that looks like the real thing. But one of the boys' family members and the community members as well have a very different take on this situation. 11 Alive's Joe Hankey spoke with him this afternoon. One of the young boys seen in the body camera video, a teenager named Kamari, talked with me this afternoon. He appeared traumatized by this incident, and he said during it he feared for his life. Meanwhile, I also talked with his mother. She said she's frustrated for several reasons, one of those being she never heard from police after all of this played out last night. Kamari says the situation should have never led to a gun being pointed at him or other teenagers. During a press conference late this afternoon, Kamari held back tears at one point while describing his encounter with a Clayton County police officer. His mother is frustrated by what played out and how she learned about this incident. Here is Kamari and his mother talking with us late this afternoon at that press conference. I thought I was going to die because I seen all these black kids just dying. And, and to have myself in that, it was just crazy. I actually found out about the video this morning. My daughter all the way in Ohio sent me the video. She found out before I found out about this whole um, situation. And I was just wondering, like, why wouldn't the police contact the parents? They, contact, they didn't contact any parents. And alongside Kamari and his mother at that press conference were several community activists. They said earlier today they met with Chief Kevin Roberts from the Clayton County Police Department. And during the conversation they had, they said Roberts said that the officer's actions followed department policy and were justified. That did not sit well with those community activists. They said they are now demanding that the department update its use of force policies. They're also demanding that the officer involved, the one that pulled the gun, they want him fired. Atlanta police fired Garrett Rolf within 24 hours of the shooting of Rayshard Brooks last Friday night. 11 Alive Chief Investigator Brendan Keefe discovered that this is not the first time the police department had to investigate the now former officer for improper use of force involving a firearm. Hey, Mr. Brooks. Two lives are about to change forever. How you doing? Hey, I'm Officer Rolf from the Atlanta Police Department. How you doing? 26 minutes after Officer Garrett Rolf started a DUI investigation of Rayshard Brooks in the Wendy's parking lot. Put your hands on your butt. They would be locked in a violent struggle. Officer and suspect both making split-second decisions that would end Rayshard Brooks' life. Garrett Rolf joined the force as an academy cadet in late 2013. One just ran out that way. The Reveal investigative team already had this video from the rescue of a kidnapping victim in 2016. He, he just ran up this way. Rolf was one of the backup officers who chased the other kidnapping suspect. We're going to shoot you. I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to shoot your ass. I'm going to fucking shoot you. He fired his taser but missed. In this incident, all the suspects were successfully captured and convicted, and there were no allegations of wrongdoing on the part of Officer Rolf. But he was investigated by the APD Office of Professional Standards 12 times, according to a summary released by the department. Four of them complaints filed by citizens against Officer Rolf between 2015 and 2018. One citizen complaint was not sustained, and he was completely exonerated in the other three. In October of 2017, APD issued a written reprimand to Officer Rolf after Internal Affairs sustained an allegation of improper use of force involving a firearm. We don't know any of the details of these internal investigations yet because Atlanta police have so far released only a summary of Rolf's disciplinary record. Found him passed out now. State records show Garrett Rolf has received more than 2,000 hours of training in his seven-year career. And since January of this year, he's been trained in firearms, de-escalation, cultural awareness, and deadly force. So at this point, Officer Rolf is not charged in the shooting from last Friday. Fulton County DA Paul Howard says he could make a decision as early as tomorrow. His office tells 11 Alive the three charges they're considering are murder, which would be, would be the most serious, felony murder, and voluntary manslaughter, which would be 
less serious. Well, today we spoke with criminal defense attorney Bill McKinney about the case. He's not representing the officer, but he used to be an officer in New York and served as a legal advisor to the Atlanta Police Department. He says in his experience, even the voluntary manslaughter will be hard to argue, and he questions how quickly the possible charges will be announced. In, in 40 years, I've never seen a jump to judgment this quickly. Uh, it normally takes weeks and months uh, by GBI investigators, uh, internal affairs from the police department, uh, and even outside agencies to, to look at this before they make any type of judgment, whether it's criminal, as opposed to something that could be civil or disciplinary. Something interesting here, folks, he says that Howard has argued in other cases against officers that a taser is actually a deadly weapon, which could potentially open the door for Rolf to argue self-defense if he's in fact charged. In the Georgia legislature, Democrats have introduced a series of measures to curb police powers after protests over police brutality and excessive force. 11 Alive's Doug Richards reports the urgency of the legislation may clash with the clock. There are only about nine days left in this much delayed legislative session here at the Capitol. And over the last two days, Democrats have introduced a very ambitious package designed at curbing police power. There's a bill that would require body cameras on every police officer in the state. There are measures to restrict chokeholds, to regulate use of force, to eliminate no-knock warrants, to regulate vehicle pursuit, and to restrict the use of tasers by police. With police incidents roiling Atlanta and the world, Democrats say, they're all overdue. The time is now. You know, we cannot go another session without doing something about what is going on in America right now and what has been going on for years. Those are big subjects. But it will likely take another legislative session to get it done, says Republican House Speaker David Ralston. I think are topics that are uh, worthy of discussion. Uh, but, uh, you know, you certainly don't want to uh, tackle issues like that in haste. Ralston promised to take up the measures next year. Democrats are hoping to attach their legislation to other bills that have more of a chance of passing in the next nine legislative days. Tonight, there are new details in the investigation into who set fire to the Wendy's on University Avenue Saturday, the day after Brooks was shot and killed. Investigators now say they are looking for two persons of interest. Here they are. They released this new photograph of a woman calling her a new person of interest in this case. They want to be clear here. Investigators think this is a different woman from the one the photographs that they released over the weekend. Those photographs show another woman whose face is mostly covered, as you can see. Once again, investigators think these are two different women, but they want to talk to both of them. We have multiple suspects at this time. We've only got quality photos of two at this time. The fire was started in multiple locations using multiple different incendiary devices, um, from homemade blowtorches to fireworks to on-scene combustibles that were just lit and thrown inside the store. Investigators say they're not sure if the people responsible are actually tied to a, a larger group. Crime Stoppers and Georgia Arson Control are both offering a reward up to $10,000 for information that leads to an arrest. Volunteers showed up to help after a neighborhood already dealing with tragedy hit again overnight. Somebody vandalized the Carver Market. They broke windows, busted doors, spray painted walls there. It has been a mess. And this is a market that's just down the street from the Wendy's where Rayshard Brooks was fatally shot by police. The market is one of the groceries only one of the only groceries in the area providing fresh produce and meat at affordable prices, as well as providing jobs. These businesses belong to neighbor first more than they belong to an entity. But this was not of the, of the neighborhood, right? This is not, this is not reflective of this neighborhood and, and our people. Volunteers have been busy all day helping clean up and board up the market. On Facebook, managers thanked everyone pledging to remain open while repairs are made. Very few options, not much access to food. Two reasons why losing this market, even temporarily, would be a tremendous impact to this community. The same goes for the Wendy's on University Avenue. Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms talked about the wider impact for this community. That's one of the few fast food places in the entire area. So not only is an employment center gone, 
but also a place that somebody can go and get a salad is now gone. Those are the things that the demonstrators need to think about. That's because this section of Southeast Atlanta is known as a food desert. That means a huge chunk of the population lives a half a mile or more from the nearest grocery store or super center. You can see on these USDA maps that applies to most of this area. Many residents are also considered low income, adding another layer of difficulty to getting access to fresh food. All right, coming up next, movie mogul Tyler Perry's generous donation to help the family of Rayshard Brooks. Your 11 Alive Storm Tracker is tracking the temperatures today, and it felt a lot more like April or October than it did the middle of June, courtesy of this upper level low. So coming up, how long this is going to be controlling our weather pattern and what you can expect for this first weekend of summer. All right, thanks a lot, Sam. And don't forget, folks, we are streaming right now on 11 Alive's YouTube channel. Subscribe and join the conversation in the community section. We got more 11 Alive news prime time after the break. going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing. Welcome back, everyone. The governor is now lifting some of those coronavirus restrictions in our state, including allowing gatherings of 50 people or more with social distancing. There is no longer a dining limit in restaurants and no seating restrictions in theaters. Bars can have up to 50 people or 35% of fire capacity. Salons, barbershops, and tattoo parlors can also take walk-ins right now. But you may want to check restaurants and those restrictions at individual businesses before you go. 11 Alive's Janu Her spoke with our restaurant owners about how they're going to handle all of this. At Sweet Auburn Seafood in Atlanta, dining customers aren't swarming in yet. At this date with, you know, everything that's happened with, you know, COVID-19 and where we are, we have not officially open our doors. Executive General Manager James Brashears says the restaurant is still taking precaution before bringing back customers to dine in, even after Governor Brian Kemp says he's allowing restaurants to operate at full capacity again. We're being very cautious about the steps that we take just to ensure that, you know, we first and foremost pay attention to the safety of our staff and our guests. That's what Ann Catrano is also doing at her restaurants, Bacchanalia and Star Provisions, even though they're open. I mean, our goal is to make our staff and our guests feel safe. I mean, that's our goal even before COVID-19, right? Rashir says every restaurant's timeline is different. They plan to reopen the dining sometime in July. Just because the restrictions have been lifted doesn't mean that it is the appropriate time and uh, safe because there's still a lot of unknowns at the start of restrictions being lifted and there's still some the same unknowns today. In the meantime, they're focused on making hundreds of meals per day for essential workers through the World Central Kitchen and hope their customers will see them when their doors open. We are still here. We're just trying to do what we can to uh, step into this new normal. So here are some other guidelines for restaurants out there. Workers only uh, only have to wear a face covering if they're interacting with the customers. 
For salad bars and buffets, workers are allowed to serve patrons in, in cafeteria style, or the business can offer hand sanitizer, a sneeze guard, and replace shared utensils to allow customers to serve themselves. And they could offer uh, grab-and-go service, but coolers can only be stocked at minimal levels. Today, new COVID-19 cases remain steady in Georgia with 664 after several days in a row of steady upward trends. There are likely a couple of reasons for this, given what we know about how the data can lag behind. This is the time we expect to see some of the impact of mass protests on COVID cases. We also got a great question from a viewer asking how much testing we're doing and how that might play a role. So here's how that breaks down. One month ago, Georgia had completed 260,000 COVID tests. As of Monday, that number had gone up to 625,000. That's a 139% increase in the number of tests given across Georgia. Another member measurement public health officials look at is the rate of positive tests. That means the number of people who have the virus. This is a lot harder, though, to calculate because people who have the virus often take a number of tests. So it's not perfect science. But we do know that one month ago, about 14 percent of people who got the coronavirus test were positive. A month later, that's down to about 9 percent. The CDC wants to see that number stay below 15. Anything above that is likely to start to strain our hospital resources. So where do we stand on those resources? Well, this is a look at those currently in the hospital. Right now, our line is pretty steady after trending up a bit last week. As cases rise, we're going to be keeping a very close eye on this trend to see how severe those cases are. Your 11 Alive storm trackers, we're tracking that area of low pressure that's to our northeast and the impacts that it's had on our weather. I mean, temperatures some 10 to 15 degrees below average. You don't get very many June nights like this that are dry and uncomfortable. We do have some showers near Rome. That, of course, is downtown Rome. Beautiful night there. And there are a few showers just in the southeast of downtown that have been scooting through North Georgia tonight. And we've heard from many of our storm trackers that said, yes, there were some heavy downpours here earlier as these cells moved from uh, northeast to southwest very slowly. Looks like we have a little shower headed towards Cartersville, one that's just east of Kennesaw, one near Dallas. So these are moving slowly to the south and one moving out of Fannin County in through Gilmer County as well. So Hiawassee had some uh, interesting clouds around and as the rain moved away this is what the sunset or right before sunset looked like here. Luke Dockery in Hiawassee uh, pa posting this picture of kind of the golden sunlit landscape here before sunset. And you can see what's causing this. This area of low pressure is off to our northeast. It's spinning around over North and South Carolina, and it's bringing in a lot of rain to coastal North Carolina right now where they have flood warnings in place. But here, we're just getting the benefit of that northerly wind, which is nice and dry for us, a northerly uh, direction to the wind. And we have no chance for any more showers or storms that could at all be severe. Uh, that has been pulled back all the way to the coastline. And a chance for general showers and thunderstorms tomorrow, much like we had today. So few and far between. But the spots that get rain, they'll see a heavy downpour. But I think most of us, more than more people will not see the rain than will see the rain. So 75 was our high today, 61 our low. Uh, we should be around 87 and 69 this time of year. And temperature wise, it is feeling great. 63 in Canton, 62 in Blairsville, 57 in Clayton, and 63 in Athens. So it's a beautiful night. Dew points are in the mid 50s, so that makes it feel very comfortable as well. And enjoy it while it lasts, because those dew points will be on the rise over the weekend. That means more humidity and the heat will be up over the weekend as well. So for our Wednesday, looking pretty good. A seven on the wasometer, still unseasonably cool, several degrees below average, with a high of 80 degrees and a 30% chance of showers and storms during the afternoon and evening hours. So overnight tonight, we'll have a few clouds around, but that's about it. Temperatures getting into the upper 50s, and tomorrow will be in the mid 70s. Uh, some temperatures in the upper 70s in the Atlanta area, close to 80, and we'll see those thunderstorms popping up as we head in through the afternoon. 
afternoon hours. But like I said, they'll be isolated in nature. Not everyone will see the rain. So as you take a look at what we're expecting tonight, just a few of those showers left over here moving to the southwest. Those should pretty much evaporate by midnight. As we head into around uh, 8.30 in the morning, cloud cover around with more showers and storms coming in during the afternoon hours, but about a 30% chance. No big deal, we don't think, on our Wednesday. And then getting into Thursday, it looks like we could see a little more coverage, maybe around a 40% chance during the afternoon and evening hours. But at this point, not anticipating anything strong to severe. So just some isolated showers on the north side. We'll see an increasing chance for rain later on in the week. And then the first weekend of summer is going to be a hot one. So just a 30 to 40% chance of rain the next couple of days. Summer starts on Saturday. We should hit 90 degrees. And if we do, it'll be the first 90 degree day of the year. I think that'd be appropriate. And then for dear old dad, you got to find a way to keep cool with him because temperatures are going to be in the low 90s on Sunday. All right. Thanks a lot, Sam. Tyler Perry is now reaching out to help the family of Rayshard Brooks, the man killed by police in Southeast Atlanta Friday night. So a representative telling 11 Alive that Perry plans to pay for the college tuition of Brooks's four children. Now, maybe long, a long ways off for them, the oldest being only 13. But the family attorney says it makes a world of difference for the family. He was grateful when Perry announced this this week. He also planned to pay for Brooks's funeral. Support like that, and it's uh, people who are actually um, in this community, that love the community, that want um, healing, and families like this. So Perry has not spoken publicly about the contribution, which is pretty common for him, but today he's being recognized in our Hero Central for making a small difference for this family. Straight ahead, children see what's happening around them. So what happens when they're asked to be part of the protest? We're gonna speak with two Georgia families about all of that coming up. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. If you look into the crowds at some of the protests, you'll see children and teenagers who are there with their families. They have a voice too, and they know they're not too young to be part of a change. They are children well aware of the injustice around them. I hope that black people getting mistreated would stop. Young people who want to do something about it. It's good to stand up for your life. 
Kennedy Harris is 10, her brother Caden 9. They told their parents they want to be part of a change. And I told them that I wanted to go out and protest. We gave them the choice and we told them just everything that could happen. And they still wanted to go. And as their parents, you know, we wanted to support them. A little bit nervous, but it was worth doing. We think it's really important to understand uh, so they can self-identify with what's going on and to just strive towards equality. This generation understanding that change requires action. And Cheryl, I couldn't watch everything on TV and then tell the story to our grandkids and great kid grandkids and they asked us, well, grandma and grandpa, what did you do when that was going on? I couldn't tell them that I just sat at home and did nothing. I think we need to change stuff right now to make a better world later on. 16 year old Whitaker Swan felt compelled. Saw what happened to George Floyd and said, I have to do something. He told his dad, Chris, he wanted to organize a protest in Sandy Springs. The unified people you have, you'd have black people, white people, men, women, people of the LGBTQIA plus community, everyone together. I think it shows that it's, it's everyone's problem and everyone needs to help to fix it. You, you don't go out and have one rally, one protest, one march, and say, okay, that's done. Did that. Check. We need systemic change. How did you feel when you were out there? It felt good that everyone cared about what was happening. Do you think sometimes people underestimate kids? Yes, but we can do anything. Young people who know their voices and their actions can make a difference for the future. I hope that they don't have to go through stuff that a lot of people are going Caden and Kennedy's mom, Tara, says that she really believes that people really want to help. Sometimes they just don't know how. So she encourages you to have conversations at home or with your friends or just ask how you could get involved, too. And by the way, we know of at least two all-kids protests that have happened in the city of Atlanta. They're called I Have a Voice, Too, and Kids Lead the Charge. They're uh, welcoming four to 20 year olds wow. in those marches. We have more on 11alive.com. Well, you gotta train them young. Thanks a lot, Cheryl. Hey, next, the city of Kennesaw takes a stand against the Confederate, a Confederate symbol. Why it could put them at odds with state law? And could changing where you are allow you to, to uh, cut down where you are allowed to vote, cut down on some of the latest uh, problems we saw last week's during the primary? We're looking into all of that. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. 
televised newscasts not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had... We all remember the video from a week ago. Voters stuck in long lines. Some of those voters, Ron, they had to wait for hours just to cast a ballot. It was absolutely insane for a lot of folks at the polls. So now some lawmakers have ideas on how to fix all of mm -hmm. that. But it's easier said than done. Doug Richards has more. State law requires Election Day voters to vote at their neighborhood precincts, which gave voters stuck in lines at this Southeast Atlanta library. Four and a half hours, I believe. Little choice but to stay in line or go home. But if the law changed to allow voters to vote at any precinct in the county. Yeah, if they saw a line in one precinct, they could have gone to another one where there was no line. Democrat Roger Bruce is behind a bill that would allow voters to vote at any precinct in their home county. Another bill would require the state to send absentee ballots, not applications, but ballots, to every voter in the state without the voter requesting it. I tried to uh, get an absentee ball ballot. I Last week in Fulton County, many voters waiting in lines complained that they'd never received the absentee ballots they had requested. If I send in an absentee ballot, I expect to get something in return, so I do not have to come out here and sit for two, three hours. You cash your ballot and you go home. It's that simple. Roger Bruce says his bill reflects the reality that voters are allowed to vote at numerous early voting locations in their home county because counties can keep digital voter lists at every location. In Fulton County, it would have let these voters choose from 164 voting locations. They do it for early voting. It's in the system. So, I mean, I don't understand what the difference is between early voting and election day other than people just don't want to do it. There is limited enthusiasm in the Capitol for Bruce's bill. Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger's office says it has no position on it and Bruce's bill has stalled in a House committee for about the last 500 days. Change is coming. The Kennesaw City Council has voted unanimously to permanently remove the Confederate flag from the city's war memorial. It will be replaced with another flag from that era. It was the unofficial state flag from about 1861 to 1879. It shows the coat of arms from the 1799 state seal on a blue background. A previous petition to remove the flag got thousands of signatures, but that flag stayed up because of a state law that prohibits moving locations or the total removal of war memorials. The city council is hearing arguments from both sides last night. There's people that don't even come downtown because they don't want to see it. They don't want to deal with that hurt, that pain. History is not there for you to like this life. There to learn from. The vote came during a packed council meeting, which was set up for social distancing. Still, the city could face legal action for the decision to bring the flag down. All right, Cheryl, let's get you caught up on some other some local stories here, folks. Gwinnett County police are working to find out who shot and killed a woman in her Lawrenceville apartment. The victim is 35-year-old uh, Shamika Bird. And investigators say that they think someone fired shots from outside, hitting the windows in the side of the apartment building. This all happened on Club Lakes Parkway. There were other people inside at the time, but no one else was hurt. The shooting left neighbors shaken. He, heard, he said he heard about 30 shots because uh, he called me at work. Everybody, as you see, it's a, it's a lot of kids around here. We're all tightly in, so it gets scary, yeah. Right now, the police are still looking for witnesses and evidence in that case. This is a disturbing story here now, folks. A four-year-old was one of two bodies found burned in a, in a car in Calquit Street. It happened on Sunday. Douglasville police identified the bodies as 59-year-old Lawanda Barrows and four-year-old Layla Hobbs. Derek Hobbs has now been arrested and he's facing several charges, including two counts of felony murder. GBI investigators now say a shooting in Coweta County started with a high-speed chase involving the Georgia State Patrol. 
The trooper was pursuing a 25 year old man on a motorcycle last night in Noonan. Minutes later, officers found him inside a bail bonds business. This is all along Greason uh, Trail. They said it appears that he actually broke in to get in there. GBI says a Noonan officer warned other officers the suspect had a gun. Police say he didn't follow the commands and was shot in the leg, once in the leg while reaching for a weapon. The Johns Creek Police Chief is on administrative leave during an internal investigation. Chief Chris Byers was criticized recently for post on his personal Facebook page, accusing some religious leaders of abandoning law enforcement after the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. The city manager tells 11 Alive the internal investigation is not related to Byers' Facebook post. For now, uh, Major Roland Castro will lead the department. What would you ask the candidates to be the next chief of the Atlanta Police Department? That is the question we've been asking all day long into the evening on Facebook and also asking that question to the leaders of the neighborhood associations that make up our city. Matt Pearl has a glimpse into what they found. Sohei Galbraith. Jay Lawrence Miller. My name is Robin Jackson. I represent uh, Loring Heights. Adair Park. Castleberry Hill. I work downtown. Currently the president of the Atlanta Downtown Neighborhood Association. My one question would be... What level of accountability will officers have to the citizenry? Would the new police chief have experience in uh, diversity? What I'm most interested in um, are those soft skills. Um, so a deep-seated um, sense of compassion. Are we asking too much of our uh, police forces? You know, part of it comes down to training and you can't really train someone to be a social worker, you know, a, a meter maid, a traffic officer all at the same time. How about the police department just says that our responsibility is public safety? We are really, really, really concerned about what they're gonna do about homeless in downtown, the homeless people. We have always had a fantastic relationship with our police precincts, um, especially zone five. We see them quite often directing traffic and also um, helping. There is no trust. If a police officer comes to my door and I own my house, I'm not going to let him in. We often talk about order, but we forget that peace part. And I think peace is um, a large part of what we need right now. We've had that good relationship with the police in the past. However, I, I do think that there are structural issues that we've seen. That the overall system is in desperate need um, of reform and change. Every voice, every body, every home matters. It, it matters. There's certainly things to address. and now seems to be a good time to do that. All right, straight ahead, more on the mounting pressure to break up the Capitol Hill organized protest where demonstrators have taken over six blocks of a Seattle neighborhood. Not as many storms and showers as we had yesterday, but still we have a few scooting through Cherokee County and through Cobb County, moving to the south. So coming up where these are headed, what you can expect for tomorrow and for that first weekend of summer. For you, get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. 
Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. A neighborhood near Capitol Hill in Seattle has all eyes fixed on it after Black Lives Matter protesters took over the entire blocks, including the East Police Precinct, first known as the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone. This sit-in has a new name, and it comes with increasing pressure from the president and other politicians to break it up. NBC's JoLynn Kent got a look inside. Seattle is on edge. Protesters showing no signs of leaving this six block area after taking it over a week ago. Now festive, crowded and peaceful, demonstrators pitching tents and planting gardens this weekend in the newly renamed Capitol Hill occupied protest. We're here in peace and solidarity for a cause that needs to change. Their demands? Reduce funding for the Seattle Police Department, invest in the black community, and release arrested protesters. I've the president doubling the down on local that. officials. But if they don't do the job, we will do the job. The Seattle Police Union blames the situation on local leaders. When you voluntarily surrender a police facility and you acquiesce to unreasonable activism, criminal activity for political gain, to me, that's unconscionable. Mayor Jenny Durkin did not give specifics on what she'll do next. We're working with all people right now to move forward to find a way that we can accommodate First Amendment, but also make sure that we have a vital area for our businesses and residents. And since this occupied area spans several city blocks, police now say it takes three times longer to respond to 911 calls, putting even more pressure on leaders and protesters to resolve this as quickly as possible. All right, back here in the ATL during this time when Black Lives Matter is on the forefront in the, uh, the fight for racial equality, other minority groups are standing in solidarity. And we're seeing it across Metro Atlanta. 11 Alive's to new her explains why. In a fight for equality, Black Lives Matter is the message paving the way. As the black community rallies together, other minority groups are noticing their cries and standing in solidarity. We need to all stand together to get equality. Zua Vang is a member of the Hmong Georgia Community, Inc., and she says she hopes other minorities see the big picture of this movement. What they're doing is not just to benefit the black lives, but it is to benefit all minority groups. Numerous Asian American groups in and outside of Georgia signed this letter, saying in part, Today we call on our Asian American community to break that silence and commit to building solidarity with our black brothers and sisters. We must resoundingly exclaim that black lives matter. The Latin American Association in Atlanta also made its voice heard, saying in their statement, unless each of us acts to uproot racism, it will continue to cost black lives. To that end, the Latin American Association stands in solidarity with black communities across this country. Vang, whose ethnicity is Hmong, says watching the black community hurt over recent events hit home. One of the people she's closest to in the world, her godmother since she was a kid, is black. And supporting black lives everywhere is to her also supporting Ms. Clemens. No matter what nationality you are, we all need to stand together for equality. 
CPAC's another Asian American group in Metro Atlanta also put out a statement in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. Your 11 Alive storm trackers tracking an incredible pattern out there tonight. It feels so great. If you haven't been outside yet today, I'm sorry for you because it is just gorgeous out there and, and it just gives you a lot of energy because it's dry, it's crisp, it's lovely. And you can see even in the shot of downtown Noonan, things are calm and beautiful. Uh, Blake Robb uh, had his drone up over Carrollton tonight right about sunset. So that was right around 10 till 9 or so as the sun was going down. Just enough cloud cover to make it very interesting out there. So we've been watching the radar. There have been a few showers, nothing too extreme, but we have had some heavy downpours that have been moving from the north to the south this evening. So we do have some showers moving in through Cobb County, moving in through Cherokee County, South uh, Floyd County as well as it moves off to the south. Most of the rain is light to moderate, and occasional downpour has been happening as well. But this has been moving across North Georgia tonight, so some of our storm trackers have been posting some interesting pictures from uh, after the rain, like this one Jerry Rogers posted. I don't know if you can see it, but it almost looks like a little pink column, this cloud that formed in the rain-cooled air. That was in Jasper after the rain passed through. So we're looking at that area of low pressure. It's off to our east. It's over North Carolina right now. They're getting a lot of rain along the coast, flooding rain, in fact. And here we're just seeing the drier aspect of the system for the most part, except for a few of those showers that moved in. For the most part, the air is moving out of the north. So that's why our dew points were down today, and it felt less humid. So as far as chances for rain, it's well off to our east in terms of anything organized. And then tomorrow, we do have that chance for showers and storms across North Georgia once again. But just general, we're not expecting to see anything organized or anything to really worry about in terms of severe. So high temperatures today made it to 81 in Rome. That was a hot spot. We were only 70 in Eatonton and Covington. We were only 70 in Thomaston and 71 in Athens. And right now it feels fantastic outside. We're in the mid-60s in Duluth, low 60s in Canton, 60 in Blairsville, and 55 at this hour in Clayton, 55 in the middle of June. So we're watching those showers move to the south here. This is one of our future radar products, and it really shows them pretty much dwindling the next few hours. The North Metro may have a few sprinkles, some very light shower activity, but then it should all dissipate during the overnight hours. So we should see those temperatures getting down into the upper 50s with uh, just a few clouds out there tonight. And then tomorrow, temperatures getting up into the mid to upper 70s with a 30% chance of afternoon and evening isolated showers expected. So this is what we're thinking as we head towards the end of the week, those chances for rain will go up a bit, so a 30% chance tomorrow, not a big deal, going up to around a 40% chance as we head into Thursday, and that just is because we'll have a little more coverage as we head in through the afternoon and evening. And then it's looking like as that low, this is that same low that I was talking about, that upper level low, it's going to be spinning around off our coastline. In fact, the National Hurricane Center is watching it, giving it a 10% chance that it could develop into something tropical. Right now, it doesn't look too likely, but we'll be keeping our eye on it here. And it could be whipping up the surf along the Georgia and the Carolina coast as we head towards this coming weekend. And I think we'll see more widespread rain as we head through Friday afternoon and evening. And then we dry it out for the first day of summer. So the summer solstice is on Saturday, and we're talking 90-degree temperatures. In fact, if we hit 90 on Saturday, it'll be our first 90-degree day of the year. And that sets us up for a very hot Father's Day where we should be in the low 90s, mostly dry, maybe a few showers late in the day if you're out barbecuing, just heads up for that. So 30 to 40 percent chance the next couple of days, a dry, hot weekend. And then the rain chances return at the beginning of next next week. Sam, thanks. A viral post claims iPhone users can get Siri to help document what happens when they're pulled over by police. But how does it work? Jason Puckett explains. There are a lot of posts and viral videos that talk about an iPhone shortcut to use if you get pulled over. So all you have to do is say, hey Siri, I'm being pulled over, and it's going to initiate 18 different actions at one time. According to these posts, your phone will automatically send your location to an emergency contact and automatically start a video recording. Now a few of you asked us to check this out, so we're verifying. Can my iPhone record video and my location if I say I'm getting pulled over? Well for the first test, we just tried asking Siri. Hey Siri, I'm getting pulled over. 
So no, it's not automatically built into your phone. But these videos aren't being faked. This is a real thing. You just have to install it first. It's done through an app called Shortcuts. Now that's an Apple created app that is already on your iPhone. Shortcuts basically lets you program your phone to do basic tasks. It took me about a minute to make a command myself. Hey Siri, record for me. Now she's recording video. The viral shortcut is called police. It was shared by a Reddit user in 2018. When you tell Siri, I'm getting pulled over, it turns down your volume, lowers your brightness, sends your location to an emergency contact, starts recording video, and uploads that video to your iCloud account. So does it work? Hey Siri, I'm getting pulled over. Yes, it automatically turned on my camera and sent my location to my work phone, which I set as the emergency contact. So we can verify. iPhones can record video and my location if I say I'm getting pulled over, but it is not automatically built in. You do have to install that specific shortcut. Now again, this isn't a new program or app, it's just instructions for your iPhone. And it lets you choose which contacts, if any, that it will send information to. This doesn't work on Android phones, but iPhone users can find a link for how to install this on our website. And if you have other questions like this, make sure you send us an email. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Today, Governor Kemp announced 100% of nursing home residents in facilities with 25 or more beds have now been tested for COVID-19. And that news is leading to some long-awaited, very happy reunions. Last month, we told you about the staff at Park Springs Senior Living in Stone Mountain. More than 70 staffers had volunteered to stay with residents throughout the pandemic, living in lockdown alongside the people they care for. So they've been separated from their own families. They haven't spent time 
with their kids or their spouses since March, but that ended when the state shelter in place order lifted. So thank you to this group that did not have to make that sacrifice, but chose to, to protect all the seniors that they care for. Just showing how passionate they are about their job. All right, thanks a lot, Cheryl. Hey, we got more news straight ahead on right here on the ATL. Me and Aisha is going to be back in just a, a couple of minutes. Thank you. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. New developments on the Wendy's restaurant that was set on fire Saturday night. What authorities say delayed firefighters in putting out this massive inferno. And an officer's confrontation with a group of teens goes viral tonight. One of the teenagers speaks out. Plus the new phenomenon psychologists say they're seeing as more COVID-19 restrictions are lifted. Tonight, we are learning more about what first responders encountered Saturday night in Southeast Atlanta when a Wendy's restaurant was set on fire. Natisha Lance is live at Fire Station 20, which responded to that fire, Natisha. Well, Aisha, the scene outside the Wendy's on University Avenue, which is just about a little more than a mile away from here, was so tight that it stopped fire crews coming from this fire station, Fire Station 20, right in their tracks, delaying the time it took them to fight the blaze. Upon our arrival, 
uh, we were met by a crowd of uh, protesters. For 30 minutes, firefighters say they were trapped, surrounded by demonstrators about 100 feet away from the growing fire. It's a helpless feeling. Yeah. We, didn't like, we don't like that. Firefighters say they felt safe inside their fire engine as water bottles, beer cans, and other items were thrown at them. Investigators are now looking for some of those people who stopped the engine's progress and those who started the fire. Multiple suspects at this time. We've only got quality photos of two at this time. Atlanta Fire released photos of the newest suspect today. This was taken from surveillance video at the BP gas station next to the Wendy's. Fire investigators are working to determine if the person was working with other suspects, one whose photo was released by APD last week. The fire was started in multiple locations using multiple different incendiary devices um, from homemade blow torches to fireworks. Investigators say they are using multiple sources, including tips and social media, to find all the arson suspects. We don't want to allow the peaceful voices and focus of our protesters to be overshadowed by events such as this. And now there's a $20,000 reward that is being offered by Crime Stoppers as well as the Georgia Arson Control Board for any information that leads to the prosecution of those who are involved. All right, thanks a lot, Natisha. Tonight, community activists in Clayton County demanding change after a police encounter goes viral. The video uploaded to Facebook shows a police officer holding five teenage boys at gunpoint. Here's the video here, already viewed more than a half million times. It happened last evening. Today, Clayton County Police released a 911 call from a nearby gas station. Someone reported teenagers stealing items and waving a gun around. In a police report, the officer said that he pulled his gun as he believed one of the teens may have been armed. The boys eventually were released after uh, police did not find any weapons on them. One of the young boys talked this afternoon at a news conference. I thought I was going to die because I seen all these black kids just dying. And, and to have myself in that, it was just crazy. Now, Clayton County police said they did find a BB gun. There it is on your screen. It resembles a pistol. It was at the gas station or by the gas station. Now, community activists want police to change their use of force policy, and they're also calling for the officer who pulled the gun to be fired. Right now, Metro Atlanta and across the nation, there is a push to improve policing standards. Earlier today, people marched for police reform in Stone Mountain. This comes following the shooting death of Rayshard Brooks in southeast Atlanta. Today, President Trump took a step to address police brutality nationwide with a new executive order. The order creates a national database of excessive force complaints, puts grant money toward helping departments reach use of force certification, and launches a program to partner social workers with police on calls involving homelessness or mental health issues. Still, the president opposes calls to defund police departments. Americans know the truth without police. There is chaos. Without law, there is anarchy. And without safety, there is catastrophe. The police union says Atlanta officers are feeling the pressure of responding to protests, working extra shifts, and being at the center of nationwide criticism. According to the department, eight officers have resigned since the first of this month. Many are saying that they are angry with the mayor and attorney general, rushing to judgment about recent use of force cases where officers were fired and sometimes charged. The Atlanta Police Foundation says morale is lower than any other time in recent memory, with officers working 12-hour shifts seven days a week. Last night, members of the Atlanta City Council were in a meeting until almost one in the morning listening to concerns about the community and the relationship with the police department. Our reporter, Joe Hankey, counted almost 500 comments, and Council Member Joyce Shepard says the goal right now is a complete transformation of the Atlanta Police Department. So a lot of time police are called just specifically when things happen and say, I got this problem, that problem. When we talk about community policing, that's folks interacting on a regular basis with officers. So it's not just when there's a call made, but that's folks creating relationships where the community see the police officers and they don't see them as a threat. They don't see them something that's being called when there is a crisis. And so we have to really do a better job of community policing. Council Member Shepard says that she's hoping to uh, keep open communication even after protesters stop marching and demonstrating. As for finding a new Atlanta police chief, she's looking for someone with a different perspective who can connect with the community.
Demonstrators here and across the country are demanding that cities start reducing police budgets in order to spend more money on social programs that could prevent crime. They call it defunding police. And that's just what is on the table in Athens, Clark County right now with a vote possible next week. And tonight crowds had a lot to say to the commissioners. 11 Alive John Sherrick is in Athens at the City Hall for us tonight. Athens, Clark County, home of UGA, with some of the most progressive residents and politicians in Georgia. But the crowds who showed up at City Hall were divided about the proposal to defund police. Black lives matter! Loud, peaceful, dueling rallies outside Athens City Hall. Two crowds waiting to speak with commissioners about the proposal to reduce the Athens, Clark County police budget in order to spend more on social programs passionate opposition and support. Inside, only four people allowed in the meeting at a time to address the commissioners on the screen, people for defunding and against. We need quality policing, not quantity policing. At 3 a.m., if somebody knocks down on my door, I'm not calling a mental health expert, I'm calling the police. The defunding proposal from Commissioner Mariah Parker, who is concerned that last year, athens Clark County Police were involved in six officer-involved shootings. The GBI and the DA ruled they were all self-defense and justified, but Parker believes there's a better way. Reduce the police force by 50% over the next 10 years and redirect the savings to mental health and social services to prevent crime and reduce crime. If they're going to reallocate the money, yes, they need to reallocate it to the community and at the same time to invest into better training for the police. And when you lower the funding, you're going to get the worst of the you know, worst of the crop. Five of the ten commissioners just proposed an alternative plan. They want to increase spending on a comprehensive, long-term anti-racism initiative that also calls for reforms in the police department without reducing the police budget. A vote on how much money the athens Clark County Police Department will get in the next year is scheduled for next week. All right, thanks a lot, John. Let's get you caught up with some other local stories, folks. Gwinnett County Police are now working to find out who shot and killed a woman in her Lawrenceville apartment. The victims identified as 35-year-old Shamika Bird. Investigators think someone fired shots from outside, hitting the windows in the side of the apartment building. This all happened on Club Lakes Parkway. There were other people inside, but there were no one else was hurt. The shooting left the neighbors shaken. He, heard, he said he heard about 30 shots because uh, he called me at work. Everybody, as you see, it's a, it's a lot of kids around here. We're all tightly in, so it gets scary, yeah. Police say they're continuing to canvas the area for witnesses and evidence. A four-year-old was one of two bodies found in a burned-out car on Colquitt Street Sunday. Douglasville police identified the bodies as 59-year-old Lawanda Barrows and four-year-old Layla Hobbs. Derek Hobbs has been arrested and is facing several charges, including two counts of felony murder. GBI investigators now say a shooting in Coweta County started with a high-speed chase involving a Georgia State Patrol trooper. So the trooper was pursuing a 25-year-old man on a motorcycle last night in Noonan. A little while later, officers found the same man in a bail bonds business along Greeson Trail. They say it appears that man broke into the bail bond spot. GBI says a Noonan officer warned other officers the suspect had a gun. Police say he did not follow commands and was shot once in the leg while reaching for his gun. The Johns Creek Police Chief is now on administrative leave amid an internal investigation. Chief Chris Byers was criticized recently for post on his personal Facebook page accusing religious leaders of abandoning law enforcement after the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. The city manager would not say if the internal investigation was related to those comments or what the investigation is all about. For now, Major Roland Castro will lead the department. Volunteers showing up to help after a neighborhood already dealing with tragedy hit once again. Someone vandalized the Carver Market, broke out the windows, shattered the windows, and spray painted the walls. It's just down the street from the Wendy's where Rayshard Brooks was fatally shot by police. The market is one of only one of the only grocery stores in the area providing fresh produce and meat at affordable prices as well as jobs. These businesses belong to neighbor first more than they belong to an entity. This was not of the of the neighborhood, right? This is not it's not reflective of this neighborhood and, and our people. Volunteers have been busy all day long helping to clean up and board up the market, as you can see. On Facebook, managers thanked everyone pledging to remain open while repairs are being made. 
Places around the country are reopening, but COVID-19 is still a threat after the break anxiety some people are having about lifted restrictions. Here, 11 Alive storm trackers are tracking a few showers out there this evening. So coming up, where these are headed, what you can expect for the middle of the week, and how about that weekend? Father's Day is coming up. What can you expect for Sunday? Appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. More people are coming out of their homes as some COVID-19 restrictions are lifted. It's exciting for some people, but for others, it can be challenging. Our Elwin Lopez looks into what psychologists call a phenomenon. From feeling uneasy in public to a fear of getting sick, Dr. Suvrat Bargave says he has seen a spike in reentry anxiety as COVID-19 lockdowns continue to ease in Georgia. Whether people are anxious again about being exposed to illness or they're anxious about being able to adjust back into life as they knew it. Both types of anxiety are focused around uncertainty and fear of the unknown as businesses reopen and COVID-19 continues to spread. It's tricky to have hard and fast recommendations for people about what's a, a appropriate response versus an exaggerated response. Lily Brown is the director of the Center for the Treatment and Study of Anxiety at the University of Pennsylvania's School of Medicine. She says it's important to recognize when re-entry anxiety and safety behaviors start to interfere with your day-to-day. -day. What might begin with just a quick hand wash after I check the mail might become needing to take three showers after the mail comes in over time. If you give into the anxiety every time it sort of nudges you on. Brown says one way to deal with that is through exposure therapy. Gradually practicing approaching those things that make you anxious rather than avoiding them. And with telemedicine services, if you're feeling anxiety, you can reach out to a therapist from the comfort of your own home. You can also call the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration's hotline 24-7. You can find the number at the bottom of your screen. That's 1-800-662-4357. All right, right now, new COVID-19 cases remain steady in our state of Georgia with 664 after several days in a row of upward trends. Now, it's likely there are a few reasons for this, right? Given what we know about the, uh, the data that lags behind, this is the time we expect to see some of the impact from the mass protest on COVID-19 cases. We also got a great question from a viewer asking, how much testing are we doing and how that might play a role? So here's a breakdown of all of that. A month ago, Georgia had completed 260,000 COVID-19 tests. As of Monday, that number had risen to 625,000. That is a 139% increase in the number of tests administered across Georgia. Another measurement 
Another measurement public health officials look at is the rate of positive tests. That means the number of people who actually have the virus. This is a lot harder to calculate here because people who have the virus often take multiple tests. So it's not a perfect science here, but we do know that one month ago, about 14% of the people who got the coronavirus tests were positive. A month later, that's now down about 9%. The CDC uh, wants to see that number below 15. Anything above that is likely to start to strain our hospital resources. So where are we on the hospital resources right now? This is a look at, at the current situation with our hospitals. Right now, our line is pretty steady after trending up a little bit last week as cases rise. We're going to be keeping a close eye on this to see how severe they actually are. Cooler temperatures today and a slight chance for showers this week. Meteorologist Samantha Moore is in with us this week and joins us now with your forecast. Hi, Sam. Hey, Aisha, boy, what a day it was. Incredible, and it's a nice night, too, out here in Rome. Quiet downtown right now. Breezes picking up a little bit out of the north. And we saw a few showers kind of scoot right by in southeastern Floyd County, uh, southeast of Rome, and now continuing their move to the south here. So we have a few showers in Cherokee County, Cobb County, stretching on over towards Carroll County. Very light stuff. There were some decent downpours earlier, though, in uh, some of our storm trackers reporting as these moved through and through Hiawassee and Jasper. We had reports of some decent downpours. Luke Dockery uh, posting this picture at sunset as the clouds were breaking and the sun was shining down, made the ground look golden here. It was a really nice shot, Luke. Thank you for posting that on our storm tracker. Facebook page. So we're looking at this area of low pressure. It's really been bringing in heavy rain here across the Carolinas. And you talk about cool. Charlotte was 61, 61 degrees for a high temperature today. That was a new record low high for them, cool high for them. Incredible. And uh, that low pressure system will keep them cool again tomorrow. And it's also going to keep us a little unsettled at times as we head through the afternoon and evening. So we do have a chance for general showers and thunderstorms. Right now, not expecting anything organized in terms of severe. If that changes, we'll let you know. But right now, we do believe it's not going to be warming up that much where we will see widespread severe. So that's what we're banking on. 75 degrees for our high today, 61 are low, so that was well below the average of 87 and 69 for the date. So we're definitely running on the cool side. Not as cool as Charlotte, but feeling really good out there. So we're at 54 right now in Clayton, 60 in Blairsville, 60 in Gainesville. It is a lovely night out there, 66 in Atlanta, 65 in Carrollton. And we're going to continue to see these showers work their way to the south. They should dissipate after midnight. Maybe a few sprinkles here on the north side of the metro as we head into the early morning hours. So overnight, we'll be mostly clear. There'll be some clouds out there, but uh, for the most part, we'll see some uh, clear, starry skies at times. And then tomorrow, mostly sunny by mid-morning. During your break, we should be in the mid-60s. By lunchtime, if you're taking your lunch in the backyard, right around 73 degrees. And we'll see those clouds building up with possible isolated showers during the afternoon and temperatures in the upper 70s if you're outside working on your deck. So we're looking at a few showers out there yet tonight. Then those move off to the south. Clouds around at times tomorrow, much like today. A few isolated showers and storms during the dinner hour and into the late evening. And then we'll see a repeat on Thursday. Just a little more widespread precip, we think, on Thursday. So we're giving it a 30% chance tomorrow, a 40% chance on Thursday, and then a 30% chance on Friday. But then that low lifts out and it's going to be off to our east and we dry it out for the weekend. So the summer solstice is on Saturday and we should have our first 90 degree day of the year, 91 on Father's Day with rain chances returning at the beginning of next week. So a mostly dry Father's Day weekend. Hey, check out this weather wow moment from Tommy Meyer. He is one of our storm trackers and he posted this picture, this incredible sunset over Lake Lanier. Nice job as usual, Tommy. Look at those colors, just vibrant. So if you'd like to be an 11 Alive Storm Tracker, we'd love to have you. Go to our 11 Alive Storm Tracker Facebook page and sign up. We'll approve you and hopefully we'll see your work right here on 11 Alive. Straight ahead movie mogul Tyler Perry's generous donation to help out the family of Richard Brooks. Home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. 
clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Bro Tyler Perry is now reaching out to help the family of Rayshard Brooks, the man killed by police in Southeast Atlanta Friday night. A representative telling 11 Alive that Perry plans to pay for the college tuition of Brooks's four children it may be a way off because uh, the old is being just 13 years old, but the family attorney says it makes a world of difference for the family. He was grateful when Perry announced that this week that he planned to pay for Brooks's funeral. Support like that and it's uh, people who are actually um, in this community that love the community that want um, healing and families like this. You know, Perry hasn't uh, spoken publicly about the contribution, which is pretty common for him, but today he's being recognized for making a, a small difference for this family. All right, Aisha, I'm going to be heading out to get ready for Up Late. It's going to be coming up in about 30 minutes on 11 Alive, so if you're up late, folks, with us, check us out, me and Aisha. All right, Ryan, I'll see you coming up in about 35 minutes on 11 Alive. All right, so here's what's coming up on the ATL. Could changing where we're allowed to vote cut down on some of the issues we saw in last week's primary? We're going to check it out. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. 
on 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Atlanta police fired Garrett Roth within 24 hours of the shooting of Rayshard Brooks last Friday night. 11 Alive Chief Investigator Brendan Keefe discovered that this is not the first time the police department had to investigate the now former officer for improper use of force involving a firearm. Hey, Mr. Brooks. Two lives are about to change forever. How you doing? Hey, I'm Officer Rolf of the Atlanta Police Department. How you doing? 26 minutes after Officer Garrett Rolf started a DUI investigation of Rayshard Brooks in the Wendy's parking lot. Put your hands behind your back. They would be locked in a violent struggle. Officer and suspect both making split-second decisions that would end Rayshard Brooks' life. Garrett Rolf joined the force as an academy cadet in late 2013. The one just ran out that way. The Reveal investigative team already had this video from the rescue of a kidnapping victim in 2016. He, he just ran up this way. Rolf was one of the backup officers who chased the other kidnapping suspects. We're going to shoot you. I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to shoot your ass. I'm going to fucking shoot you. He fired his taser but missed. In this incident, all the suspects were successfully captured and convicted, and there were no allegations of wrongdoing on the part of Officer Rolf. But he was investigated by the APD Office of Professional Standards 12 times, according to a summary released by the department. Four of them complaints filed by citizens against Officer Rolf between 2015 and 2018. One citizen complaint was not sustained, and he was completely exonerated in the other three. In October of 20. 2017, APD issued a written reprimand to Officer Roth after internal affairs sustained an allegation of improper use of force involving a firearm. We don't know any of the details of these internal investigations yet because Atlanta police have so far released only a summary of Roth's disciplinary record. Found him passed out in the State records show Garrett Rolf has received more than 2,000 hours of training in his seven-year career. And since January of this year, he's been trained in firearms, de-escalation, cultural awareness, and deadly force. At this point, Officer Rolf is not charged in the shooting at Wendy's last Friday. Fulton County District Attorney Paul Howard says he could make a decision as early as tomorrow. His office told us the three charges they're considering are murder, which would be the most serious, felony murder, and voluntary manslaughter, which would be the least serious today. 
We spoke to criminal defense attorney Bill McKinney about the case. He is not representing the officer, but used to be an officer in New York and served as a legal advisor to the Atlanta Police Department. He says in his experience, even the voluntary manslaughter would be hard to argue, and he questions how quickly the possible charges will be announced. In, in 40 years, I've never seen a jump to judgment this quickly. Uh, it normally takes weeks and months uh, by GBI investigators, uh, internal affairs from the police department, uh, and even outside agencies to, to look at this before they make any type of judgment, whether it's criminal, as opposed to something that could be civil or disciplinary. He says Howard has argued in other cases against officers that a taser is a deadly weapon, which could potentially open the door for Rolf to argue self-defense if he is in fact charged. Now to the push for voting solutions in Georgia. We all remember the video from one week ago. Voters stuck in those long lines, sometimes for hours. Some lawmakers have ideas on how to fix that, but it is much easier said than done. Doug Richards has more. State law requires Election Day voters to vote at their neighborhood precincts, which gave voters stuck in lines at this Southeast Atlanta library. Four and a half hours, I believe. Little choice but to stay in line or go home. But if the law changed to allow voters to vote at any precinct in the county. Yeah, if they saw a line at one precinct, they could have gone to another one where there was no line. Democrat Roger Bruce is behind a bill that would allow voters to vote at any precinct in their home county. Another bill would require the state to send absentee ballots, not applications, but ballots to every voter in the state without the voter requesting it. I tried to uh, get an absentee ball ballot. I Last week in Fulton County, many voters waiting in lines complained that they'd never received the absentee ballots they had requested. Uh, I send in an absentee ballot. I expect to get something in return, so I do not have to come out here and sit for two, three hours. You cash your ballot and you go home. Is that simple? Roger Bruce says his bill reflects the reality that voters are allowed to vote at numerous early voting locations in their home county because counties can keep digital voter lists at every location. In Fulton County, it would have let these voters choose from 164 voting locations. They do it for early voting. It's in the system. So, I mean, I don't understand what the difference is between early voting and election day, other than people just don't want to do it. There is limited enthusiasm in the Capitol for Bruce's bill. Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger's office says it has no position on it, and Bruce's bill has stalled in a House committee for about the last 500 days. And that was our Doug Richards reporting. So we actually uh, have more questions about that, about how you can check to see if your absentee ballot was actually counted in the primary. You can check out our article on 11alive.com that walks you through that process. Well, change is coming. The Kennesaw City Council has voted unanimously to permanently remove the Confederate flag from the city's war memorial. It will be replaced by this flag. It was the unofficial state flag from around 1861 to 1879 showing the coat of arms from the 1799 state seal on a blue background. A previous petition to remove the flag got thousands of signatures, but the flag remained due to a state law that prohibits moving locations or total removal of war memorials. The city council hearing argues from both sides last night. There's people that don't even come downtown because they don't want to see it. They don't want to deal with that hurt, that pain. History is not there for you to lie to this life. The vote came during a packed city council meeting, which was set up for social distancing. Still, the city could face legal action for this decision. Well, what would you ask the candidates to be the next chief of the Atlanta Police Department? That is the question we've been asking all day on Facebook and to the leaders of the neighborhood associations that make up our city. Matt Pearl has a glimpse of what we found. Sohei Galbraith. Jay Lawrence Miller. My name is Robin Jackson. I represent uh, Loring Heights. Adair Park. Castleberry Hill. I work downtown. Currently the president of the Atlanta Downtown Neighborhood Association. My one question would be. What level of accountability will officers have to the citizenry? Would the new police chief have experience in uh, diversity. What I'm most interested in um, are those soft skills. <laughs> um, so a deep seated um, sense of compassion. Are we asking too much of our uh, police forces? You know, part of it comes down to training and you can't really train 
someone to be a social worker, you know, a, a meter maid, a traffic officer all at the same time. How about the police department just says that our responsibility is public safety. We are really, really, really concerned about what they're gonna do about homeless in downtown, the homeless people. We have always had a fantastic relationship with our police precincts. Um, especially Zone 5. We see them quite often directing traffic and also um, helping. There is no trust. If a police officer comes to my door and I own my house, I'm not gonna let him in. We often talk about order, but we forget that peace part. And I think peace is um, a large part of what we need right now. We've had that good relationship with the police in the past. However, I, I do think that there are structural issues that we've seen. That the overall system is in desperate need um, of reform and change. Every voice, every body, every home matters. It, it matters. There's certainly things to address, and now seems to be a good time to do that. In a statement from Courtney Smith, head of the Midtown Neighbors Association, she says the focus must remain on areas of the city with the greatest immediately immediate need, writing, quote, our neighboring communities that are struggling are depending on us to listen and stand ready to collaborate. We want to hear from you. What are you looking for in a new police chief? Give us a call 678-765-9514. Leave us a voicemail. Be sure to include your name and the best way for us to contact you because we might use your message on air. More coronavirus restrictions ease today. There is no longer a limit on the number of diners allowed inside restaurants, but as many owners told Tracy A. McPeer, they're still not back to normal yet. We talked to restaurant owners and chefs of 18 different restaurants today, from Decatur to Buckhead, and most say they are not making any real changes, even though now they legally can have diners in their restaurant up to full capacity. Part of that is because they still have to maintain the six foot rule and they can't fit any more diners in while keeping them six feet apart. They also expressed that they'd continue wearing masks and sanitizing for the foreseeable future. One restaurant owner has been closed to diners since the shutdown. Robbie Kugler says they've been gearing up to open up La Tavala, South City Kitchen and Alma Cocina on Wednesday the 17th all along and will stick with that plan. Then they will stagger opening any further. It will depend on uh, demand and how what people are saying and feeling and how many people want to eat out. Um, my first step is to have all of our restaurants filling every seat we can at this capacity. And if that's the case and it's happening regularly, that will tell me that more people are ready and willing to go out to eat and will expand our capacity. I talked to executive chef Ann Quatrano of Bacchanalia and she says she's even still requiring her kitchen staff to wear masks. She says that she knows that it's hot but they're dealing with food and the front staff, so she says it's the safest bet for now. New tonight, a possible breakthrough treatment for the coronavirus. Scientists in England say a steroid called dexamethasone greatly improves survival in patients with severe COVID-19. Researchers called the study promising. It was released today. The drug is not expensive and even in low doses reduced deaths by a third among patients on ventilators. Researchers say it's only it's the only drug so far that's shown to save lives. An extra 370 bucks. That's how much the average American is expected to have paid for groceries by the end of the year. I feel like it's like a thousand dollars. Grocery bills have spiked as the coronavirus continues to royal supermarket supply chains. According to the Consumer Price Index, food prices went up 0.7% last month after jumping 1.5% in April. New Nielsen data shows that nationwide prices for staples such as eggs and ground beef are on the rise with higher prices in those specific cities. You're on the road when you see police lights in your rearview mirror. That's when Siri can help, according to a viral claim. Next, our verified team gives you the facts. A little unusual, an upper level low this time of year, swirling to our east, bringing in those clouds and those cooler temperatures today. So coming up, how long this pattern's going to be hanging around and what you can expect for Father's Day weekend, which also happens to be the first weekend of summer. Color altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, 
live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. neighborhood near Capitol Hill in Seattle has all eyes fixed on it after Black Lives Matter protesters took over entire blocks, including the East Police Precinct. First known as the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, the sit-in has a new name and with it comes increasing pressure from the president and other politicians to break it up. NBC's Jolene Kent got a look inside. Seattle is on edge. Protesters showing no signs of leaving this six block area after taking it over a week ago. Now festive, crowded and peaceful, demonstrators pitching tents and planting gardens this weekend in the newly renamed Capitol Hill occupied protest. We're here in peace and solidarity for a cause that needs to change. Their demands? Reduce funding for the Seattle Police Department, invest in the black community, and release arrested protesters. The president doubling down on local officials. But if they don't do the job, we will do the job. The Seattle Police Union blames the situation on local leaders. When you voluntarily surrender a police facility and you acquiesce to unreasonable activism, criminal activity for political gain, to me, that's unconscionable. Mayor Jenny Durkin did not give specifics on what she'll do next. We're working with all people right now to move forward to find a way that we can accommodate First Amendment, but also make sure that we have a vital area for our businesses and residents. And since this occupied area spans several city blocks, police now say it takes three times longer to respond to 911 calls, putting even more pressure on leaders and protesters to resolve this as quickly as possible.
A viral post claims iPhone users can get Siri to help document what happens when they're pulled over by police. But how does this all work? Jason Puckett verifies. There are a lot of posts and viral videos that talk about an iPhone shortcut to use if you get pulled over. So all you have to do is say, hey Siri, I'm being pulled over, and it's going to initiate 18 different actions at one time. According to these posts, your phone will automatically send your location to an emergency contact and automatically start a video recording. Now a few of you asked us to check this out, so we're verifying. Can my iPhone record video and my location if I say I'm getting pulled over? Well for the first test, we just tried asking Siri. Hey Siri, I'm getting pulled over. So no, it's not automatically built into your phone. But these videos aren't being faked. This is a real thing. You just have to install it first. It's done through an app called Shortcuts. Now that's an Apple created app that is already on your iPhone. Shortcuts basically lets you program your phone to do basic tasks. It took me about a minute to make a command myself. Hey Siri, record for me. Now she's recording video. The viral shortcut is called police. It was shared by a Reddit user in 2018. When you tell Siri, I'm getting pulled over, it turns down your volume, lowers your brightness, sends your location to an emergency contact, starts recording video, and uploads that video to your iCloud account. So does it work? Hey Siri, I'm getting pulled over. Yes, it automatically turned on my camera and sent my location to my work phone, which I set as the emergency contact. So we can verify, iPhones can record video and my location if I say I'm getting pulled over, but it is not automatically built in. You do have to install that specific shortcut. Now again, this isn't a new program or app, it's just instructions for your iPhone. And it lets you choose which contacts, if any, that it will send information to. This doesn't work on Android phones, but iPhone users can find a link for how to install this on our website. And if you have other questions like this, make sure you send us an email. Of course, our days have gotten longer. Sunset now is right around 10 till 9, and that's when Blake Rabb uh, captured this picture in Carrollton from his drone of the sunset. Just a few clouds at that time as it looked to the west and the sun was going down. But now a few showers are heading towards Carroll County. Very light. They are on the light side, but don't be surprised if you hear a few raindrops starting to fall very shortly there in Carrollton. Definitely the clouds have increased there, and this area of showers is been working its way across North Georgia and now in towards uh, I-20 West Georgia area and during the last few hours. And most of the rain has been very light, but there have been some isolated, just embedded heavier downpours there like you see near Cedartown. So we'll continue to watch that as it works its way from north to south during the evening hours. As these showers work their way through Jasper, Jerry Rogers noticed this really cool cloud. I don't know if it's from the rain-cooled air or what, but it almost looked like a little pink towering cloud here after the rain moved through and it was right around sunset as well so I think that's why it had that pink tinge to the air. So we're looking at that upper level low that's spinning off over the Carolinas that kept their temperatures in the low 60s today. Uh, in um, uh, Charlotte they had a record low high temperature of only 61 degrees so definitely cool air over the Carolinas and we benefited from that as well with that northerly flow so we're going to continue to see this pattern as we head into tomorrow although the low will move a little further away from us that will open us up to maybe a few more showers and storms as we head into the afternoon hours we have a chance for general showers and storms tomorrow afternoon and evening from the storm prediction center right now nothing organized to be severe so high temperatures today 81 in Rome 71 in Athens, 70 in Covington, and 70 in Eatonton. And right now we're looking at 61 in Athens, 60 in Gainesville, and 54 in Clayton. It is a cool night for the middle of June. Overnight we'll get into the upper 50s, and tomorrow we'll make it into the mid 70s with just a few afternoon and evening thunder showers expected. A 30% chance of that tomorrow. So here's the timing. There are those showers we're tracking right now. Moving to the south, we'll see a few clouds out there in the morning, and then we'll end up seeing seeing some isolated showers popping up after lunch right around 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Maybe an isolated heavier downpour. We could still see an isolated thunderstorm or two as we head in through the afternoon hours. A 30% chance on Wednesday and then a 40% chance on Thursday. Just a little better coverage on Thursday. And then into Friday as well as that low starts to spin off of the coastline. We'll have to watch it for potential tropical development over this coming weekend. And of course it's a big weekend. The first weekend of summer. Summer solstice is Saturday, and we should have our first 90-degree temp of the year.
Father's Day. We may even be a little warmer than that in the low 90s and a mostly dry Father's Day weekend with rain leading up to it and rain coming back at us at the beginning of next week. I know the owners are 100% committed to getting baseball back on the field. Um, unfortunately, I can't tell you that I'm 100% certain that's going to happen. Major League Baseball Commissioner Rob Manfred isn't sure if there will be baseball in 2020, but a couple of the Braves' biggest stars are now taking to social media to let everyone know they are ready to play ball. Ronald Acuna, Austin Riley, Ender Enciarte, and Mike Soroka were very clear. They shared the same message on Instagram, quote, tell us when and where we are ready. Ozzy Albies had a longer message saying the fans are ready to watch us play. The coaches are ready to coach. The players are ready to play. Let's play ball. For now, we all wait and see if there will be any progress. The WNBA has announced its plan for the 2020 season. The league is finalizing a partnership that would make IMG Academy in Florida the official home of the 2020 season plus playoffs starting in July. Atlanta Dream head coach Nikki Collins says she understands the decision to play in a bubble, but it's not sure it's going to run smoothly. So I think we're going to have to be quick on our feet and figure things out. Um, you know, my goal is to know that I'm going in with 12 players that want to be there and view it as an opportunity and, you know, to support those if, if they have concerns. All right, Falcons fans, here it is. Your first look at Tom Brady in a Bucks uniform. We spoke with Falcons head coach Dan Quinn about Brady coming into the division and any advice he is offering the younger players who might be trying to prepare for Brady. His message to them, slow down. Number one, I think the guy's a hell of a competitor, but you know, to put you know our time and attention into that space, I think would be early. Um, there's a lot that has to go down before then, so like I would try to make them understand keeping the main thing the main thing and preparing for somebody that's, you know, a long time from now, um, I think wouldn't be as beneficial with their time as what they need to get done in their game. The NFL announced today Las Vegas will host the Pro Bowl in 2021 at the Raiders new stadium. The Pro Bowl has been played in Orlando the past four seasons. Vegas is the 11th different city to host the Pro Bowl since its inception in 1950. Former dog champ Bailey and former tech linebacker Lucius Sanford are on this year's College Football Hall of Fame ballot. Voting runs through July 7th. The 2021 class will be inducted in December. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Have your house cleaned by outside workers. The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. All right, that's going to do us here for 11 Alive News in prime time. Stick around. We'll see you over on 11 Alive at 11 p.m. for Uplight. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station.